Giovanni here at FrapTools and today I picked the three more random techniques from our website. I will use them to create and improvise a patch from scratch. There will be some trial and error as usual, but hopefully we will get to a pleasant result. And you can do the same too. So today's random picks are the Spectral LFO, the Timber Mod VCA and Self Modulation and the Percussion Sound. So we have two interesting techniques for Fumana and uh, another rather unusual use of Brainsos uh, timber modulation circuit. So the Spectral LFO uh, uses uh, the green square output but as LFO as a modulation input in uh, Fumana. The Timber Mod VCA and self-modulation is a rather unusual uh, uh, technique with the Brenso, where basically we feed the Timber Modulation input, which by default is uh, um, semi-normal, it receives the input from the green sine wave, we feed it with the very final output which it affects. And by doing so, we are capable of, uh, let's see, um, listening to Brainsaw's final output through this VCA here, which is a linear multipurpose VCA. But the cool thing is that uh, this doesn't break the semi normalization to the four uh, timber destinations, so we can use the final output to modulate itself. We'll see what we can get out of it. And then finally, uh, finally we have uh, another Fumana technique which is quite similar to the one we saw before, which is the percussion sound number two, where we fed the um, Fumana with uh, um, a white noise uh, or a pink noise or any kind of input, but we used Falistri's uh, um, gate outputs or, or Sapel's uh, trig output to excite the bands. And uh, we are very close, as I said, to Brainsaw's uh, mm, square uh, or, yes, to Brainsaw's square output as in the spectral LFO technique. So, uh, for example, we can start by feeding Fumana with this technique. So this is basically already done. That was the technique. And uh, I'm gonna feed it th to Fumana and uh, use the all output. Quite nice, honestly. As you can see, the the symmetry knob uh, has more dramatic effects because of the self modulation. I like the fact that this sound here is right in the last band. I think we're gonna need it later on, and then. The other technique, the second technique, the spectral LFO ones, uh, used the green LFO, so we can take the square wave output and patch it to the modulation input. To obtain this kind of sounds. So, as you may have noticed, uh, this very percussive sound actually doesn't excite the, the 16th band so what I can do is to take this envelope follower output here which is already uh, and always flashing and patch it here have this sort of uh, glitchy background sound. And uh, then I need to make, uh, to give it a meaning. So...
let's see how the square wave sounds. So since the square wave has just one uh, raising uh, edge, I'm gonna perceive it has uh, half the speed, but actually this is the LFO speed and this was just twice its speed because of the uh, pulse wave shape. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make a little variation on the technique and I'm gonna use the square wave uh, the, the sawtooth output and I think that so I'm gonna start a new project on the Usta sequencer and I am going to set the clock source to external for all the tracks and then I'm gonna use the brain source square output as a clock so that my sequence now we'll move in sync to these Fumana beats. Uh, 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 uh. I'm gonna tune the brain so the lower. I don't particularly care about the the tuning, but I want to have some uh, extra low end for the use the sequencer because now I'm going to use the CV to control it. Let me see. I can set a very simple base patch. So four, four, and uh, eight. And then I'm gonna hold down settle and remove the stages from the sequence. And then I'm going to let's see. and 16 and uh, I think that I am going to transpose it down a little bit by holding down a shift all okay nice now it's better and then I still lack uh, technique which is the percussion sound number two which is surprisingly close to what we are already doing I'm gonna make another slight variation and uh, use another track of my Usta sequencer which is still in sync with the brain so I'm gonna set up a gate pattern and uh, so the first thing that I can do is to set it at a faster tempo and I can try to patch it this is gate A of track 2 so it's this one to the second modulation input because Fuman allows me to use two different uh, sound sources and two different uh, modulation sources. Let's see how it sounds. And now I can actually uh, play with different stage length. So this is this can be one idea I can play with another pattern like this actually uh, I can hold down the course button to keep 
the pattern length consistent. Now this is 18, I may want to keep it to 16. This has this sort of bouncing sound. So this can be one idea. Uh, so instead of using Sapel's pink noise, I can try to create a noise sound and patch it to Fumana's main input. So my first idea here is to use uh, Falistri. with a heavy uh, FM so I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm gonna even have an unbalanced FM so I'm gonna take I'm gonna set both generators as LFOs and uh, patch the attenuverted output of the yellow one to control the green oscillator pitch until I obtain a very annoying sound. If it doesn't do the job, I can play with full modulation like this. So this is one idea. Let's see how they blend. to use one of the odd bands where my brain so is and patch it to another track on my quad steer channel and route it to a reverb to have this sort of uh, cicada sound And then I can try to take uh, another track, another band, and see how, if I, I can have a cleaner sound, perhaps to route through a shimmer. Maybe uh, this one, let's see. This is too low. This could work. I am still not quite satisfied with the gate pattern on the Usta sequencer, so I'm gonna try to find a solution to that. So I'm gonna mute these channels. I'm gonna... So, instead if, so first of all, instead of using the all output, I can route my odd output on one channel and my even output on another one.
So I can try to work with a ratio of one to one and see if I can play with the gate length. Now, now it sounds really better because I can create some polyrhythms. And then I can try to bring in my background layer. allows me to have some very minimalistic kind of variations on a gate level and if I want to experiment a little bit more I can set the color to green to achieve some ratcheting effects. So I am pretty satisfied with the results and I think we can cap it here and as always I am really curious to see what you may um, produce with these random techniques so if you want to film a video and share with us use the uh, frap ideas hashtag like we did. I hope you had a good time, I sure did and I'll see you next time.